Hello everybody, so my name is Kristina Himanen and I come from the Finnish National Plant Phenotyping Infrastructure. We are distributed at two universities in Finland, so I am representing the uh, University of Helsinki unit, where we have a high throughput facility. And in Göteborg, uh, Professor Marko Keinen, and he presented the special sensor development work, what they are doing in the University of Eastern Finland. So we uh, complement each other in the, in the approaches. And we have also divided uh, so that uh, the Helsinki unit is partner in the EPPN and the uh, University of Eastern Finland is uh, the contact point for the emphasis uh, partnership. So in Helsinki, we have uh, two high throughput units. Uh, we have a unit for small plants, for 1,000 plants, with the basic imaging sensors and, and uh, uh, up to 40 centimeter plant uh, size. And then we have a large plant unit for 270 plants with the chlorofluorescence and RGP. And there we can measure plants up to 1 meter 20. And so the small plant unit is in a controlled environment where we can uh, modify the humidity and temperature, diurnal rhythms and, and some light quality. We can supply CO2 and, and different light intensities. And so, uh, because in Helsinki our back background is in the molecular biology, we are gearing the system down to, to ask uh, very small questions. So we have geared the system down to uh, petri dishes so that we can follow germination. We can compare the, the growth and morphology of uh, mutant Arabidopsis lines and we are dissecting plant organs for different physiological measurements. Um, and here, here is a pathogen treatment. Uh, so here is the, the way how we have uh, downscaled the small plant system to petri dish system. There we can analyze uh, hormone concentration gradients and also uh, perform bioassays with the different uh, compounds of interest. And uh, in dissecting organs, we have also uh, analyze some uh, berries, uh, strawberries, and raspberries for their shape and size and, and color in the system, also in, in a multi-well system. So then the, the large plant system, uh, Marek gave just now a very good introduction to the PSI uh, phenotyping system, so I can skip uh, five minutes of my talk. So we have the same uh, same system and, and same sensors um, for RGP and chlorophyll fluorescence. And here in this space, we can uh, monitor the environment and we regularly also inspect the spectral quality of the, of the space. And from this uh, platform, I will present now a, a, a case study that is related to the topic of the session, which is the breeding for new varieties. And uh, the case study I will present is uh, related to dwarfing uh, genes that we have introduced into uh, uh, spring turnip rape crop, which is an, an important oil crop for the Northern Hemisphere because um, it's a more co-tolerant than the Brassica narcus, which is more widely used and while the Napus has a higher yield uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, the Rapa has a better yield stability. And uh, what fits to the Northern Hemisphere also is that it has a shorter growth period and early maturation. And the targets that we have for the breeding work are related to the architecture. Uh, so we aim to obtain wide canopy at the rosette stage for efficient light harvesting and so biomass accumulation uh, that will then later on be utilized for the seed uh, production. And, and as a second aspect is the lodging resistance, which is related to the height and, 
and branching of the plants. And these aspects are, are related to the uh, dwarfing uh, character. One challenge for breeding uh, turnip rape is that it's an outcrossing species and, and this causes a lot of genetic variation and, and sometimes genetic drifting during the uh, breeding. So uh, our pro approach here was um, to cross our turnip rape um, with um, Indra uh, Nakus uh, carrying the uh, BZH mutation for, for dwarfing. And this PZH uh, gene is involved in the chiparellic acid responses in plants. And since uh, chiparellic acid is very is a hormone, it impacts many aspects of plant growth and development. Uh, but uh, the biggest impact that uh, chiparellic acid is on, on elongation growth of the plant. So here is uh, rice plants uh, supplemented with chiparellic acid. Uh, extremely elongated and, and slender uh, rice plant without treatment and, and rice plant uh, treated with chiparellic acid uh, suppressor. And um, so the dwarfing gene is not maybe uh, for breeding uh, novel varieties because it's uh, actually called the green revolution gene. Uh, it has many names um, in, in every species and every crop it has obtained a different name but uh, the, the, the key player in this uh, green revolution is this uh, Della protein here in the middle of this protein complex and this uh, Della protein is a transcriptional repressor uh, it's binding constitutively transcription factors that are required for uh, chiparellic acid uh, gene respo response genes uh, that are then mediating all those uh, chiparellic acid hormone responses. Um, here is the structure of the uh, Della protein that can, like I said, have all these names in literature. And it has uh, two specific domains, Della and, uh, and uh, uh, cross domain. And the mutations in the different crops are located in different uh, areas of this gene. And now uh, the important um, factor in this uh, dwarfing breeding is the semi, semi dominant. Uh, impact that this gene has. And it's related to the fact that uh, these growth promoting transcription factors are constitutively present in the plant. And they are constitutively bound by the Della protein and they are uh, repressed constitutively during normal plant life. And then upon uh, chiparellic acid. Uh, addition, chiparellic acid is binding an F-box protein that will find the Della protein and, and ubiquit mediate ubiquitination of the Della protein and the Della protein will be degraded by the proteasome. And when the Della protein is uh, degraded, the transcription factors are released to promote induction of chiparellic acid response genes. And this is the, the fact that it's a constitutive repression constantly present in the cell causes the semi-dominant additive effect that is seen in many of these uh, dwarf mutants. So the N-terminal uh, mutations in the Della domain uh, interfere with the F-box interaction between the chiparellic acid and the Della protein. And so then the Della protein is not degraded and the chiparellic acid response is not released. And now in a, in a heterozygous stage, 
like in a hybrid breeding or any heterozygous stage, 50% of the DELA proteins will be degraded, but 50% of them will remain suppressing the transcription factors. And this causes the semi-dominant effect. Uh, in addition to the gain, gain of, so where the DELA is stabilized, this is a gain of function mutant, which is the most common, but there are also lots of function mutants of the DELA, and then the result is a constitutive chiparelic uh, acid response, uh, which causes uh, enhanced growth, but it's then uh, tamed by feedback negative regulatory loop. Uh, so, like I said, we uh, introduced this um, DELA mutation from INRA collection, from NAPUS to the uh, RAPA, with the aim of um, obtaining uh, reduced growth, so, so dwarfing through semi-dominant uh, effect uh, to, to impact the branching of the plant and impact the canopy structure of the plant. And um, so after the cross, uh, four back crosses were done with the rubber parent. And what we were analyzing was the F2 population of 240 plants uh, that we analyzed uh, to the rosette stage. And from those 60, we followed to the flowering stage. Uh, and we did this analysis in the large plant nappy facility and subjected the plants for daily RGB analysis. And we followed the uh, typical growth parameters and some calculated parameters. And because we had the segregating F2 population in analysis, we confirmed the genotype by high-resolution res melting curve, which can identify uh, a few nucleotide mutations when they impact the melting curve in the PCR reaction. Uh, so we followed the, the, this population growth from the seedling to flowering. And um, the side view images uh, were the most interesting. They uh, allowed assessing the biomass, the, counting the branch numbers. Uh, we saw some color differences and, and differences in the height and area. And... Uh, So, at the, so we followed for the rosette stage, which is, which is important for the photosynthetic uh, period of, of the plant. We analyzed the, the canopy area, and there we can see that the compactness of the, the dwarf was increased. And indeed, we, we all the time had the intermediate response with the semi-dwarf uh, individuals. And also when we analyze the height per width, um, uh, the, mute, the, the dwarf plants were most compact. And uh, here is the, the height. So the, uh, the dwarfing occurred, and, and we can follow the semi-dominant there. And these were already in the previous. And here you can see the, the um, slightly increased uh, branching of the semi-dwarf. But then, um, for various reasons, there is a very high variation in the, in the branching and height. So it, this is the number of branches. And in, in semi-dwarf, the variation is, is huge from four to eight, um, while the the dwarf is more uh, centered, and there are some outliers there. Mm. And here's the variation of the height in the semi-dwarf population. These are the same uh, growth parameters in the later stage for 60 plants that we followed till the flowering. Uh, still indicating the, the semi-dwarf nicely in the middle. And, and one of the 
the characters that we were looking for was the uh, the first branch, and in the in the dwarf and semi-dwarf, the first branch moved lower in the stem, and uh, this character increases the the lodging resistance of the crops, while the the seed producing canopy is not uh, considerably uh, reduced in the mutants. Uh, and this is shown also here in the height and width ratio, which uh, supports the lodging resistance for the, for the dwarfs. And in our preliminary study, this uh, characteristic also translates to the field. So we have the reduced growth there. And uh, this is the turnip rape team who generated the crosses and, and gave us the, the material. And I think that this kind of um, uh, genetic background where, where the response is dose dependent and causes variation, this is a, an excellent material to start uh, integrating the, the molecular information to the phenotypes in different organs and in different uh, developmental responses and, and, and in, in hormone combinations to then start making the molecular network of, of the plant regulation. And here are the people who are working on the, on the phenotyping facility, mainly the PhD student Mirko uh, has done most of the analysis and the greenhouse team. Thank you. Thank you.